Hi, this is Andrew with Certified Kind, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to prevent and control hemp russet mite using only organically approved inputs and strategies. Before we start talking about the f***ing hemp russet mite, I want to tell you about Certified Kind. Certified Kind is a certification program for organically grown cannabis and processed products. At Certified Kind, we believe that the way you farm is more important than the yield. And our mission is to empower organic cannabis growers in the new legal cannabis sector. One way we do that is through our certification program. So if you're a commercial grower and you're interested in certification, check out our website, request an application. All right, without further ado, let's talk about the most effective off-the-shelf product that you can use to control hemp russet mite, product that is allowed in organic farming, and that would be wettable sulfur. Sulfur has been used since at least the 1930s to control mites in citrus groves in Florida, and has shown to be not only effective against russet mites, but also powdery mildew. So the easiest and quickest way to get control over hemp russet mite is to find a sulfur product and to, to use that on your plants. I won't recommend one sulfur product over the other. It's important to look at what sulfur products are available in your region. I can tell you that organic fruit and vegetable growers will often use uh, products like Cumulus or Cosavet um, when they're looking for a sulfur. Here are a few images of some of the sulfur products that I was able to find at my local grow store. These are sulfur products that are allowed in organic farming and would be allowed in our certifi Certified Kind Certification Program. Um, you always want to look for OMRI listed products. That's the easiest way to know if they're allowed in organic farming or not. And when I did my search, there were over 40 uh, sulfurs that OMRI has reviewed and approved. If you're a commercial cannabis grower in Oregon, Washington, or Colorado, or California, uh, they actually have restrictions on which sulfur products you can use. And there's only like one or two sulfur products that you can, that are on those uh, State Department of Agriculture lists for allowed pesticides on cannabis. Even though sulfur is an allowed material for use on organic farms, it still is pretty toxic. So make sure you're careful when you use it, follow the label instructions and um, don't think just because it's allowed in organic agriculture that it can't hurt you. So I've been talking a lot about sulfur and I just want to emphasize that this is just one tool of many that you have to fight russet mite. And you don't even want to get to the point where you have to use sulfur. So a better approach would be to develop preventative practices such as not bringing russet mite infested plants into your grow operation. Quarantine your plants if you decide to bring in clones from off farm and check them out under the microscope to see if they're mite infested. The other thing that you can do is use beneficial insects. A lot of people have been having success preventing hemp russet mites through beneficial insects and there's a company that I know of called Natural Enemies that can give you uh, better information than I can on exactly which beneficial insects to use, which predatory mites work best. So what are some of the other products that you can use off the shelf to control russet mite? Well, a lot of people are having success with essential oils. Uh, essential oils can help deter russet mites and there are certain formulations that um, work better than others. When I'm talking about essential oils, I mean things like lemongrass essential oil, thyme essential oil, oregano essential oil, cinnamon, uh, things like that. And so there are products out there that you might want to try. Some of them have citric acid in them. A lot of you have probably heard of the product Nucum. Some people have claimed that Nucum worked for them to at least slow down the activity of the hemp russet mite once you have it. Some people have had success using neem oils 
to at least prevent hemp russet mite. So they're using that more in the vegetative stage uh, every seven to ten days as a way to uh, deter uh, russet mites if they're there um, at a, in small population. It's also uh, using neem oil is also benefit for reducing fungal pressure, uh, fungal pathogen pressure. And I'm talking about mostly powdery mildew and botrytis um, in cannabis. And so another product that you might be able to look at would be Grandivo um, and Regalia. They're made by Marone Biosciences and some growers have had success using these um, in combination to sort of slow down the activity of the russet mite and also um, kill them. Another product that you might look at is PFR97. Growers have been using Grandivo and Regalia and PFR97 in combination. Russet mite dies in cold temperatures and also in very, very hot temperatures. So if you have winters where um, it gets down below freezing, the russet mites will die. But if you are in a greenhouse setting or indoor setting where it never gets below freezing, you can expect your russet mites to be a perpetual problem. And I think that's what's happened in with tomato greenhouses. And if you want to research russet mite more, look for articles about tomato russet mite. Thanks for listening, and I hope that you don't have hemp russet mite. Don't pass that along to your neighbors. Don't share infested clones.